Miss Zoe, you ready to get up and go outside? Talking on the phone with a buddy of mine yesterday evening. And uh, he's, he was going to come by here today. He said, he said, well, when do you get up in the morning? I said, I usually get up between 3 and 5. He said, 3 and 5? When do you sleep? I said, man, I go to bed early. Uh, here he's acting like, you know, I don't sleep or something because I get up between 3 and 5. Uh, what is it? If you go to bed at 9 o'clock and sleep for 7 hours, that's 4 o'clock in the morning, right? 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you go to bed early. But on that note, what I'm laughing about kind of most of the time in the morning is, is these four dogs. Zoe, the one that just went out, she's an old dog, and she's always up and at them in the morning. Casey boy, he's an old dog. He's always up and at him in the morning. These two young dogs right here, they're almost always curled up and uh, and sleeping and won't hardly even move when I get up in the morning. And they're the youngest ones here. So this this goes right along with that goes right along with what you generally run into with people, you know, like young kids. They seem like they sleep. They want to sleep, you know, all damn day or all morning. And, you know, older people, uh, it's like we get up, you know, at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. Uh, anyhow, let's take a look at what we're into today, what we got on the, what we got on the bench. Uh, uh, my buddy is coming by today. They're, they're bringing me... Uh, they're bringing me a truck that needs some stuff done on it. But what I got on the bench here, I'll show you. This is a part for an auger. Uh, a whole auger like you'd have on a... You'd run it on a skid steer or a, a tool cat. And this, sh this auger shaft... Has obviously broke... And uh, I was talking to my buddy yesterday evening. He was telling me how this broke before up here. And he actually, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but he actually, he'd already welded this back together right there. And if you look inside the hole, you can see where it's been welded on. But it held. Um, and as far as putting this back together... Uh, if you watched, um, when I fixed that tractor part, uh, there was a part for a John Deere tractor that was cast that I fixed, and I talked about how I, how I often puzzle piece things together to get them in the right position. Uh, and you see, that's what I would do here. And when I'm trying to puzzle piece this together, it's not going together just perfectly. And that's because some little burrs, when it, when it finally broke, some little burrs have interfered with my ability to squish this back together like it's supposed to. So step one on this is I would, I'm going to take, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to sand or grind or file some of the sharpest little breaks that I can find in it. And I'm going to try to get that so that when I, when I go to puzzle piece this thing together, that it fits just absolutely perfect. Uh, you can see that the break kind of came from these holes that were machined in it. And I would say those holes are in there for a uh, purpose of maybe oil. Um, oil would probably go through here so that there you get some oil to those splines or from those splines i don't know um we may not be able to do that 
they need this thing you know we might have to just put it together i said well if if there's some part that's supposed to get oil by these holes and we can't machine these holes right away you know you might just have to slather a handful of bearing grease or something in there and and go to drilling with it but there's one thing that's for sure this is not worth a hoot the way it is uh that's one thing about that's one thing about a part like this uh as of right now it's worthless so whatever we whatever we try to do to it to get it going uh you know it's probably worth taking the taking the chance because obviously it's no good the way it is now whether i can drill this or not when this is welded together and, and you and you got it all of this welded that's going to be tough drilling uh especially with that small of a bit so we'll have to think about that a machinist with a mill and some really good bits uh could probably chuck this up and really do a nice job on it but you know the, if you take it to a welder and get it welded and then you take it to a machinist and have it machined and you end up with more money in the part than what it's worth then it's you're making a repair that's not worth doing so uh i think we're probably just going to weld it back together and slather some grease on it and make a hole with it and see how it does I'm using that hole really to as something to look at. I've grinded this and put it back together twice, I think. And for as far as uh, you know, repair purposes, I think it's as straight as I'm going to get it obviously with regards to doing some sort of machine work chucking it up in a lathe and all that i don't know if it's that straight i don't know if it needs to be it just needs to turn an auger i think i'm gonna tack it up so i tacked that up and on this side back here I went ahead and welded all the way around it. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, when I do this puzzle piece and to put something back together, I would use the puzzle piece method to get it as close as I can get it to where it belongs. And I do that without doing any beveling because if you was to bevel this piece and this piece and prep this like you were making a uh, a beveled weld you're gonna have a really hard time lining this back up the puzzle piece method gets you tacked up to where you know we're really close to to the way this thing was when it came apart and you see how i welded all the way around this the reason i did is because the first thing i'm going to do is cut this metal out of this side to get my penetration and on a lot of stuff I'll get something tacked up and then I'll go in with a carbon arc and I'll carbon arc and I'm not going to do that on this. That would take probably more time than necessary. I'm going to take a big torch and I'm just going to go and cut out a hunk uh, quick and dirty. Uh, so that's next. So I chucked the part up in the welding positioner and I've been grinding on it. This area that I torched out. And you might notice if you look here, I made sure to leave as much of that rim as I possibly could. And I think it's important that that's there and I didn't grind it or torch it clear down to the to where it's uh, machined out the larger section because that that's my guide right there uh, when i weld i don't want to weld much more than that because this thing's gonna have to be ground off and if you put weld on there 
more than you need uh, it's more work to take it back off and you know we're going to have to weld this up and grind it in a way that you know i think that i've got enough of it ground down to the right size and then when them guys reassemble the auger you know they might have to grind it more if it won't go together we'll we'll see but uh, i'm going to put some weld in this that's the next thing So Miss Princess Diane got the water changed in her water fountain and she came over here and made a little bit of a mess with her crunchy nibbles. Not sure what she's going to do next. Maybe, might be nap time. But we got to keep going on what we're working on. I've taken and filled that in and that one wedge cut out that pie cut out whatever you call it that I've cut out of there and I've really done it with the focus of not putting too much weld in there I'm trying to avoid spending uh, a lot of time grinding this to, to get it back uh, I might have some low spots I see some low spots and I may go back later and do some dabbing dab some spots to fill it in a little bit more but overall i'm going to leave that area for now and go to a different spot uh probably straight across from there and um and cut a wedge out again just like i just did and i can see it's very slight but I can see how this welding that I just did has has curled this thing a little bit that way. And that's what it's going to do. When you weld steel, that's what it's going to do. Uh, you know, even with this weld where I've welded across that side, that's probably helping some to control that. And when I go to cut that out right there, it's probably going to go even more that way but then when i weld that it's going to come back uh the metal expands and contracts and it and it shrinks and it and it you know it it does what it does and controlling that is just something that takes time experience you'll see uh the main thing is whatever you do to this side of something do it to that side that's where i've had my best luck uh, I've, ha I've worked with guys that said, uh, slow down, you know, uh, you're welding it up too fast. And, and they would, they would run a pass in this. I just put six or seven passes of weld right here. I've worked with guys that would run two passes in that and wait 30, 40 minutes for it to cool down and then run two more passes. Uh, it, it, you know, you can't work on a part for two days if the part is worth less than uh, six hours labor or four hours labor or whatever uh you got to get it done and you know if you don't know how to get it done and make it work in an amount of time that that, that it's affordable then you know obviously you don't have any business running a welding business but the next thing i'm going to be doing i'm going to cut a wedge out of this side it's probably going to curl this way I'll put a very equal amount of weld in that side. It's probably going to come back. Uh, and, and, you know, then we've pr pretty much got two more sides to, to do cutouts on. And, and we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, moving on. Next is uh, making, cutting this out and making some room to put some more weld in it. So I've put weld in both sides of this and I've done the beveling with the torch. I think I will do some carbon arcing on this now because in between the places where I've done the beveling, I just need to poke in and the carbon arc would be good for that poking. 
I took that carbon arc <clears throat> and went to gouging on that side area of that thing and I had no intention of taking that much out of it but I was seeing cracking and I just kept following the crack and when I got rid of the cracking um, you know I had to take enough out around it to get back in there and weld that's just what I'm gonna have to do uh, I'm not leaving any cracks in it you just as well you know not even do it if you're gonna do that so I'm welding this up I welded that up Gonna have to do some grinding on that, but I'm gonna gouge out the other side now. There's one more side that's not been purified. That would be right here. Definitely got some high and low spots. Uh, but that's about all the time I think I should put into welding on it so uh, I'm gonna let this cool down while I take a break and then we'll do some grinding on it try and get it back in shape the Miss Diane and the Casey boy in the rays of the sunshine oh I hear hound dogs you hear that hound doggy? What them talking about? What the hound dog talking about in there? You like to hang out here and be good friends with Miss Diane? Yeah? Miss Diane? She will be your good friend until you get up in her face and she'll give you the old one too. What you talking about, hound doggy? Oh, he's a big hound doggy. Yeah, he's a talker. That boy, he's a talker. Oh, there goes my child. You guys are just a big G with Moe. While I'm at it here, I think I'm gonna dab on a few of them places where he welded that before. You know, there's a couple places I could dab on and fill in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I filled in those other spots, cleaned everything up. Spent a little time sanding on this to get it smooth and a lot of people probably would wonder what the hell difference does it make whether you just grind something or or sand on it I tell you the way metal is the smoother it is the less chance you've got of it breaking on you uh, when you do have a failure something breaks somewhere you know a, a crack forms in a little place where there could be some damage or a rough spot and from there it's kind of scored and it, it'll just peel like a zipper so the smoother you can get something the better you know guys in trade school that are welding their certification plates together uh, they can benefit greatly by getting that that weld really smooth before they put it in the machine and bend their test plates because you know if you take a a really coarse grinding wheel
like you have one of these regular grinding wheels and, and you grind into a plate this way and you put a bunch of really rough score marks in it in this direction and then you try to bend that thing that way those score marks might open right up and be a crack and fail you when you know otherwise that may not have happened if you would have sanded it smooth so you know you can't you got to be limited on how much time you're going to put into something but it definitely doesn't hurt to take a little time to try to get something smooth and if there's surface defects that you can sand out that's a big help uh so that's it for that um moving on to the next job